um, on, onwards, onwards into yoga. Um, the question for today is what is the condition that helps you to thrive? Like what are the conditions you need to be able to thrive knowing that we've been in the um, elements of nature and that sort of got me thinking about it too. But so as I mentioned, I'm gonna be relocating my yoga offerings from offering from a new space. And I want to be very intentional about what space I do enter into because there are a lot of different places in yoga, um, in Richmond yoga, and they all have their own vibe. They all have their own energy. When I first started out, I was really attracted to like the bells and whistles, right? Like the external um, shape and form of the place. And now I'm finding that I really have to go deeper, being intentional about where will I personally thrive? Where will my practice and my practice of teaching thrive? And so I'm looking at, well, what is the intention of this space? How much consciousness is the person who's running this space like able to hold? And what are they bringing in? Um, what is the energy here? Is there a sense of community or collaboration or am I just meant to be like a minion that bows down to whatever comes from above, which like I'm not down with that anymore. I'm done with that piece. Um, you know, where's the integrity and am I in alignment with this space? And then is it a strong container where I don't have to do all of the work? Like I'm not cleaning the bathroom and, and doing all of the things where I can just step in and be more in my own magic. And so, you know, it's been a great process for me to identify like, oh, this is what will help my practice and my teaching to thrive. And if that's thriving, then what will help my students to thrive, our community, this, this class that we've built together um, to thrive. And so I feel like it's kind of like plants, like, like I am not a gardener. I am a brown thumb, dedicated, like full on, maybe later in life. But um, I have been able to keep a few plants alive and I'm really proud of myself and what they need, right? Like, what do they need to flourish? They need the earth that they're in. They need the containment and the support and the nourishment of the earth coming up that they are in. And then they need the right amount of water. And that's about all my plants need, a little bit of sun. And they're like super um, neglect us and we're happy. But like if I overwater them, they're not happy. And if I underwater them, they really are not happy. So it's that kind of like, what is the, um, the exact fine mix? So the plants need it and we need it ourselves in life. We have to find what brings us enough stability that we feel comfortable, we feel safe, right? That earth quality that we've talked about for the last few weeks. And then also the water equality. How can we move? How can we be mobile? We need it in our bodies as well. Too much of the watery movement quality, we just kind of fall apart. It's easy to get injured. Same thing, in too much stability, same thing. You won't fall apart necessarily, but you won't be able to move. It's really easy to get injured. And so we're looking for the place of balance. If you think about it, if you put water and earth together, you end up with mud. And mud is just like, it could be gross and disgusting, or it can just be like, you think of it like super fertile, right? Really nourishing. That's why people take mud baths, right? Because it's so nourishing to the skin, to the whole body. And that's what we'll bring in today, the sense of bringing together the earth and the water to create this muddy, nourishing, sustaining, supporting um, balance within our bodies in a deeper perspective this sense of both being stable and flowing um, in in yoga there's a word called sara which captures that and it really talks about the essence of who we are as being sara s-a-r-a -A, that essence that is both completely unchanging like consciousness is completely unchanging and yet wildly diverse, always changing, that we can hold the paradox of both, that we are the paradox of both, right, within our own bodies. And that helps us, when we connect with that, it helps us to come into our hearts, which is where balance is restored. And balance, you know, our, our hearts always hold the peace that we're seeking, the joy that we're seeking, the freedom that is innately ours, and the stillness, the silence. So we'll enter into practice kind of to get muddy today and we'll see how it goes. Start by taking a seat that will support you. 
to turn your inner thighs towards the mat and sit up well. And then close your eyes and turn inside and breathe in and all the way down to the sitting bones once again. Feel your sitting bones get squishy. Well, the bones don't get squishy, but imagine that they're resting down onto solid earth, but earth that's been rained on. So there's a little mud, there's a sense of squishing down in and how supported you are when that happens. And lengthen up through your spine and the sides of your rib cage. Draw the heads of your arm bones back and lift your head slightly so your throat is open. And you feel the stable form of the physical body and the movement of the breath within it. Become sensitive to the breath. Become sensitive to whatever your experience is in this moment and identify, is it feeling a little more watery, lots of movement, or is it feeling a little more earthy, lots of stability? Or somewhere in the middle. If you're in the middle, it's lovely. If not, just notice that you may want to bring in more of the other quality as we move through practice today. Now, join your palms, bring them up in front of you. And having taken a moment to connect with your heart, allow your intention to unfold. It's from your heart. It's not something you think up. So you've got to listen. Allow it to come forward. Together, we'll chant OM three times. We'll just start with chanting OM today so we can get moving. Welcome your in breath. OM. OM. your head to your heart space once again and then release your hands down onto your thighs lift your head slowly open your eyes all right so let's come to the mat we'll start in cat and cow you do want to have a block in a few minutes but we'll start on hands and knees Remember how we were touching the earth so sweetly a few weeks ago with that sense of connection and belonging and do the same here. So place your hands with care. We touch the earth to remember our belonging to her and then to feel the stability coming up. Then with fluidity, with motion, we start to move and breathe. So inhale and take your thighs back, lift your heart, curl upwards. And exhale, scoop your tail, let the spine ripple until your head is the last looking into the heart. Inhale, thighs roll back, heart lifts up, lift your gaze, and exhale, scoop and round. So continue on the natural flowing rhythm of the breath. The foundation stays stable. Nothing moves in the foundation, and yet everything else can move. Really allow the movement of your cat and cow to come from your pelvis and your thighs. Your thighs turning and rolling, the pelvis moving, and then your spine rippling up like a wave. Feel your breath. Let the breath blow away any concern. So you can be right here. And then after this next exhale, begin to shift your movement a little bit. So making it a little bit less cat and cow, a little bit more free and fluid. 
if that makes sense to your body. So it may be a little twisting or turning or shifting your hips. Don't change the foundation. So there's the stability, but gently move in a way that satisfies your body. There's the fluidity. And if you've been sort of circling, you might circle in the other direction as well. Come back slowly into a neutral position, keeping your hands stable, walk your knees back a couple of inches and then curling the toes, lift up to downward facing dog. Start with knees bent, knees bent, squeeze the shins towards the middle. So they don't move of course, but they squeeze in and even pull your pinky toe back towards your outer heel and that will help to awaken the shins. And then roll your inner thighs back. So finding the fluidity by rolling inner thighs back, let your tailbone reach up for the sky or sitting bones reach up, lift your low belly, scoop your tail down and then slowly stretch the legs a little straighter. Feel what parts feel sticky or stuck. Like there's a little more earth. What parts feel open? There's a little more water. And you sort of wanna meet in the middle balancing out the two. Now, like a wave, scoop your tail under, chin goes to chest, roll forward into plank. So it's like a wave action until you're out in plank, then bend your knees to a hover just above the mat, push your hips way back. You're in like a crouch and then come back up to downward facing dog. This was our water salutation we did last week. So we'll do it again. Scoop the tail round through the spine, round all the way forward to plank. Lower the knees just to a hover, push your hips way back, and then lift the hips up away from the floor into downward facing dog. One more time like that. Scoop the tail, lift the low belly, round forward into plank, hover the knees, shift back, push back, come up to downward facing dog, and this time walk your hands back to your feet. And standing forward bend at the back of the mat, feel the feet firmly planted on your mat. And then rooting down through your legs, sweep your arms to the sky, come all the way up to standing, feel the stability of the legs connected to the earth, exhale palms together in front of your heart. Imagine you're walking through like a spa treatment or you know, volcanic ashy mud, just like the most nourishing mud possible to get yourself to the top of the mat. So every footfall, falls down, not just onto the firmness of the mat and the floor, but into like a squishy, nourishing, muddy existence. And your feet would love it if you actually did that in person, in real life, and then come to the top of the mat. So release the arms and stand well in Tadasana for a moment. And then exhale. We'll take just a moment to set up for the, the next little piece. So we need a blanket if you have one. I forgot to tell you this a moment ago. Sorry about that. So you're gonna take your blanket, yeah, and roll it. So if it's like about this size, roll it the long edge. Yeah. So I'm ending up with a blanket roll about like this. I meant to have you do this before we started, but I got a little excited. Okay, so then this goes at the very end of your blanket. I mean, excuse me, at the very end of your mat, the back end of your mat. It can be a beach towel. It can be two little couch cushions if you need it. That also works. So all the way at the end, that's there. And then grab your blocks, your one block. One block is plenty. Okay, take your block between your calves. And to experience this kind of muddiness, we're bringing in the quality of earth and the quality of water at the same time. You can bring your hands to your hips, bend your knees a little bit and make sure that your feet are pointing straight ahead. So the earth equality is the stability and the hugging in. Squeeze both shins to the middle, shins in. So you squeeze your shins to the block, 
there's the earth equality. You can feel how it wakes up your leg muscles, turns on the inner leg, the outer leg, maybe even the glutes, and there's power, there's stability here. Now we wanna add the flowing quality of the water. So with the knees slightly bent, roll both inner thighs back and wide. And you all know this, you've all done that with me before. So there's the fluidity of water, thighs rolling back and wide, good. These are the two we're particularly gonna work with today. So scoop your tail, draw your um, belly up, but the shins go in, the thighs go out. That's the work of today. Shins in, earthy. Thighs out, flowing, watery, spacious. Both at the same time, we get a balance in the leg that aligns it and aligns your hamstring. So inhale, now reach up. Keep the shins in and the thighs wide as you exhale, bow forward. You may notice the difference right away in your Uttanasana. I do for sure. My hamstrings are aligned in a different way. Shins hug into the block. Tops of the thighs wide out to the sides. Inhale and reach your heart forward. Exhale and fold. Again, inhale and reach your heart forward. Exhale, strong legs, fold, hug in, thighs wide, right at the top. One more time like that. Inhale, heart halfway forward. Exhale, fold. Take your block away. You can set it off to your side and step your left leg back, come into a lunge. Now we'll help create this action with your hand. So take your right hand with your palm um, to the outer right shin push your right shin towards the middle. So there's shins in and resist that. Lift the left thigh a little, widen the left thigh, widen the right thigh, thighs wide, thighs out. There we go. So shins in, thighs out. You can feel how this starts to align the legs. Pull the leg and the hip. Good. Now lower your left knee down onto the mat and take your right arm straight forward, circle it up and back. Exhale. Inhale as it comes forward and up. Exhale as it goes back. You can turn the ribs, but keep the legs steady. Go one more time, forward and up and all the way back. And then touch the mat beside your right foot. Lift your left knee and step forward, standing forward, bend. See if you notice in the difference in the two sides. Inhale your heart halfway forward. Exhale, step your right leg back to a lunge. Pause, take a deep breath. And then your left hand comes to the outer edge of your left shin. Push your left shin towards the middle. Squeeze your right shin towards the middle too. And then lifting your back thigh, widen both thighs. So you use the inner thigh muscle, pushing into the inner thigh bone to push it out to the side. What you wanna find is that your thigh bone now in your left hip is pointing straight ahead. There's no like diagonal action. Good, lower your right knee down and stretch your left arm forward. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, circle it back. Couple of times. It stretches forward and up with your in breath. Turn the torso, exhale, head back, remember. And one more time. And all the way back. Good, bring your hand down to the mat. Lift your back foot, step forward again, standing forward, Bandhu Tanasana. Inhale, extend your heart towards the front. Exhale and fold. Take arms wide, root through the legs, rise up with fluidity, with flow, and join your palms in front of your heart. Remember your intention. We'll move into what I'm gonna call the mud salutation. It's a combination of the earth salutation we did a few weeks ago and the water salutation from last week. We'll play around with it. So release your hands and inhale, sweep them to the sky. Exhale and fold over, Uttanasana. Walk your feet all the way back to downward facing dog. So your hands stay and every foot fall. It's like you're squishing down into mud. It may be that your heels land on your blanket. That's okay. Or they might be just ahead of it. Either one's fine. Now we start with those watery wave rolls. So with your arms steady, scoop your tail, roll through your spine all the way to the front of the mat, to plank, bend the knees, shift the hips back and sweep up to down dog. Do that three times. So you roll forward into plank, bend the knees, shift the hips back 
and up to down dog, roll forward into plank and pause, and then lower all the way down, exhale onto your belly. Flip your toes back again, they might hit your blanket, that's okay. Stretch your arms straight forward out on the mat, there's the earth. Inhale, lift arms and legs and heart in Shalabhasana, inhale up and then exhale and ripple back down. So it doesn't have to be huge, we're gonna do three of these. Inhale, ripple up, exhale back down. One more time, arms and legs, lifting up the whole back line of the body, turns on. Exhale, lower down, slide your hands back under your shoulders, push, curl your toes and push back to downward facing dog. This time, walk your heels back onto your blanket and slowly walk your hands back towards your feet. You can either do a chair pose or sit all the way down into your squat. So super earthy malasana. There we go. So we have the blanket there if you need it. Now squeeze your shins in, take your thighs wide and lift your heart. Good. Come up from the squat. So push your heels down into the mat. Sweep your arms wide if you have the space. Rise up. And then we dive right back down. So roll down. See how it goes to roll down. It's a little bit different. And then I've been playing with just sliding my hands out to down dog. If your mat will allow that. If not, you can walk your hands out. There we go, taking this mud salutation again. Scoop your tail, roll forward through your spine towards plank, bend the knees, shift back, downward facing dog. Roll forward into plank like a wave. Bend the knees, shift back, downward facing dog. Roll forward into plank like a wave, pause, and exhale, lower into the earth's gravity, belly down. Turn your toes back, stretch your arms forward. Inhale, hover up, exhale, float back down. Really small, it doesn't have to be huge. You can put your arms by your side if you need to. Inhale, hover up, exhale, back down. One more time, inhale, hover up, exhale, back down. This time slide your hands alongside your chest and curl up into a regular cobra. Let it be like a wave there, the head ripples to the top. Exhale, lower, go back, downward facing dog. And then walk your hands back to that squat position or chair pose. If it's too much to squat right now, do chair pose. Good, squeeze the legs, the shins in, the outer thighs wide. And then either stay here or we added the crow pose so the hands can come forward, you shift forward. So you've got the stability of earth beneath you and you just play, see what's possible. Then lower back down into squat, rise up standing, inhale. Exhale, palms to your heart. We'll do it one more time. Inhale, lift. Hands dive down like you're diving into water, roll through the spine, we don't often do that. And then either walk yourself out or slide out like on a water slide out to downward facing dog if your mat will let you. Scoop your tail under, roll through the spine, forward into plank. Bend the knees, shift back, come up down dog. Again, roll forward into plank, stay steady in the arms, exhale back as you ripple through the spine, up down dog. And then one more time, forward into plank, exhale, lower all the way down to the earth. Toes back, arms forward, pause, catch your breath. And then everything lifts. You could just lift the head and, the, and heart up and exhale, lower back down. Or you can lift arms and legs and head. Inhale up, exhale, lower. One more time. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower, hands beside your chest, curl up in cobra now. So find the earthy steadiness of the legs to allow your heart to flow open and somewhere in the middle of that is some balance. Exhale, lower, curl toes, go back downward facing dog. And as soon as you hit down dog, walk your hands back towards your feet, settle into malasana squat, super earthy, feel the earth beneath. Yep, heart rises up and then shift forward, crow pose, or stay in squat. And then shift back, reach down, rise up from squat to standing. 
And exhale, hands to your heart. That heats me up very quickly, which I like. All right, reach the arms to the sky and slide your way back out to downward facing dog. So either way that that makes sense to you, it can be like a dive or it can be a slide or if sliding is not possible, just walk your hands out, beautiful. Take your right foot high into the air and three leg dog and exhale to come forward into lunge. Now shins in, so notice if your um, right hip is way off to the right, sometimes that happens. Swing it back and really hug the right shin in and then, then widen the top of the right thigh. So it's not taking the hip off to the side. It's just an energetic widening. Push your feet down into the stability of the earth and then reach up into crescent. There we go. Good, return to your breath. Open to the bigger energy, open to grace. Right? Like what could possibly be revealed at any moment? And then draw your palms together at your heart. Spin your back heel down. Front, back toes point towards the short edge. And then open the arms out into warrior two. Now we don't often do that transition in this class. And it's useful for the hips. So keep squeezing the front shin, the right shin, over towards the left side of the mat. And then lift the left inner thigh. That's it, scoop your tail and lift up in your low belly. Come back to crescent. So I like to circle my arm, but you can do it however makes sense to you. Lift the back heel, spin the hips, come back to facing the front in crescent. Shin squeeze in, widen at the tops of the thighs, and then root down into the mud to rise up like a lotus blooming over top. Exhale, reach down, touch the mat, and step back to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out to release what may be blocking your practice in this moment. Be right here with it. And then staying in the stability of the arms and the right leg, inhale your left leg up, three leg dog. Step it forward to come into a lunge. Pause here so that you can really align. So again, I'm looking for that the, that the left hip is not off to the left, pointing the left thigh on a diagonal. We want the left hip in line so that the left thigh points straight out over the toes. It's hard for me to say that over the Zoom, but in person, we'll figure it out. So shins hug in, thighs wide. Root into the legs to inhale and come up in your crescent. So mud is rich and nourishing, right? We have like all the earth we need. Create the earth you need by squeezing the legs, but then add the water by really freeing up the hips. You can lift the back thigh more. Good, scoop your tail. Now palms to your heart, turn the back heel down, toes towards the long edge of the mat and then open up into Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. With stability, squeeze the muscles onto the bones. With more flow, lift the right inner thigh up and back. And draw your tail down, lift your heart. And then again, turn back to crescent. That can be kind of a funky transition. Take your time, no problem. Root down into the legs, root down into the mud, root down into that which nourishes you so that you can reach upwards and thrive. We each have to find our own way to do that. Exhale, reach down, touch the mat. And now you have the choice. You can go through a vinyasa, just a regular one. You can go through a muddy vinyasa, or you can rest in child's pose or downward facing dog, whatever works for you. We'll meet up in downward facing dog again. Return to your breath and your intention and feel how there's this quality, there's sara happening, meaning connection to something deeper and yet movement. 
Inhale your right leg high in three leg dog. Bend your right knee this time. Let's take the right foot towards the left side. Tip your tail. And step forward into lunge. Back heel comes down. Bring your right forearm to your right thigh. Parshva Konasana, left hand on your hip. Excellent. Again, we need enough earth to stay stable. So squeeze the leg muscles around your bones. And from the earth, pull up into your core. Then lean a little forward and take the tops of both inner thighs back. Really, the left thigh tends to collapse here. So lift it up and back a lot. Then scoop your tail and turn open. Stay there or fingertips to the floor or block. Top arm over. So once you feel like you're set, right, then you can thrive. Reach out with your top arm up and over your ear. And from deep inside, stretch a little further, a little more, right? The conditions are right, you're going to bloom. You're trying to get the right conditions for the body to thrive, no matter what else you're doing besides yoga. Exhale your hand down onto the mat. Lift your back knee. Bring your left knee down and right hand on the right thigh. Inhale to lift and exhale to twist now. So, you know, in the twist, it's really easy for the hips to start going on their own tangent, which we don't want. We want the hips to stay really square as best you can. And so the shins really help with that. Keep the shins hugging the middle. Then at the tops of the thighs, think of your left thigh. Really wide in the left thigh. And you'll feel that as more space in your um, low back. Then lengthen and twist more. If you want to take variation on the twist, fine. Lift the back knee or stretch the arms or bind it even. Or just stick with where you are. If that feels like thriving. Sometimes we think we have to push really hard to thrive. We'll just burn ourselves out. There's a sweet spot where you're meeting your potential but not overdoing it. I'm not good at finding that spot, but <laughs> I'm hopeful that one day. Inhale now to untwist. Bring your fingertips to the floor. Lift your back knee. You might want your blocks. Totally fine to add them. Stretch the front leg to straight. And then bend your front knee, shin over the ankle. Stretch the front leg to straight. Squeeze the muscles. So bring up earth through the legs. Bend the front knee. And again, stretch the front leg to straight. Bend your front knee. Now, walk your right foot a little bit over to the right. So I'm going maybe a foot and a half width. Take your right hand on the inside. Stretch your right leg and pull your toes up. So I'm specifically slightly wonky, yeah? But squeeze your hips to face the front. If this is too much, just put your foot back in the middle. Either stay here or walk your hands a little more over to the left side. The game is not to let your hips turn with you when you go to the left, keep the hips square as they were. Squeeze, leg muscles steady, earth in the legs, but flow. So the thighs widen at the tops and bow over a little more if it's available. So there's this muddy quality, nourishing, supporting, opening. Walk your hands back around. Walk your front foot back to the middle. Bend your knee and step back to line, uh, down dog. Mm, feel the two sides. My right leg feels infinitely more rooted to the mat than my left. You're going to aim for that on the left side now. Inhale, left leg up. Bend your left knee. Take it up and over towards the right side. Keep your right arm firm, right? So lots of earth in the right arm so that the left leg has the fluidity to play. And then step forward. Come into lunge for Parvakanasana. Left forearm, left thigh, back foot on the floor. You can start with the right hand on your hip if you'd like. Open a breath, right? Open the pathway of your breath so it can flow, so you feel supported like a breeze blowing across the flowers. Then earth, from the feet up, draw into your core. 
body feels stable, supported, steady. Lean a little forward, take the tops of both thighs back and really lift up the right inner thigh. Draw your tailbone under. So when you lift the right inner thigh, there's more room to scoop your tail under. Then top arm up and over. Stay there or fingertips to the floor on the outside or inside of the front leg. So you've drawn all of this nourishment, all of this support so that you can thrive out, push down into the feet as if you're pushing down into soft, squishy mud that's holding you steady, but then extend your spine more, shoulders back more. Good, turn your ribs, look up. Exhale, right hand to the mat, lift your back heel, put your knee down, lunge. So hips straight ahead, then left hand on your left thigh, inhale your right arm up and twist. Again, pause before you go to the fullest, just to check that your hips are not <laughs> swung off to the, the left. That's what they're gonna wanna do. So keep the hips neutral. Then with the shins squeezing and the legs steady, lift the right thigh and widen it, the back one. Back leg always needs more of that fluidity movement because it gets stuck. And you'll find that once you do that, then you can turn like mad, turn the ribs. Shoulders back, head back, not forward. So you can drink in the essence, right? The deeper knowing. When we align the body, we have a greater access to the movement of life force and Shakti to our own intuition. Push down. You gotta listen though. Inhale. Untwist fingertips to the mat, lift your back leg up, and then slowly stretch the front leg straight. Use the blocks, of course. Bend your front knee, point your hips straight ahead. And again, stretch the front leg, really widen your right thigh. Bend the front knee. Stretch the front leg. Good, bend your front knee, walk your left foot a little bit over to the right, uh, sorry, the left. It's about a foot and a half width. And this time, left hand on the inside, stretch the front leg, peel the toes up. So it's a little bit of a sideways Parjvakanasana, getting into the angle of the hamstring in a different way. From the earth, pull up, turn both hips to the front, there's the hard part. Keep them there and walk your hands a little over to the left, uh, no, to the right. So I'm a little bit off my mat with my hands. The trick is to keep the hips not going with you or not going against you. So the hips don't swing out to the left, keep them steady. And you can feel, oh, wow, there's a lot of earth in that particular hamstring that I didn't even know about. I'm just trying to get some water in there. Bend the front knee option to do a vinyasa. It can be a mud vinyasa, it can be a regular vinyasa, or go to child's pose, or downward facing dog. Checking in with yourself for what you need in this moment. And the, the vinyasa can be done on your knees as well. If you're in child's pose, again, just feel how you are held by the earth, but like it's a soft, nurturing, nourishing earth, like you're in a freshly tilled garden. Another standing pose, take your right leg high. Step forward into lunge. Bring your back foot in a bit and let's get very stable in warrior one. So the legs are steady. Let's bring the hands to the hips just for a moment, pause. Breathe deep. Okay, so front knee's gotta bend. Now, scissor the legs, so squeeze them in. There's earth, shins are steady, but really again, the back thigh. Widen, turn the left thigh to the left and widen it over to the left. Then draw your tail down so you can come up more. And take your arms up. If you're feeling stuck or you know constricted in this pose, that's actually what we want to go for a little bit. 
right? Because this is such an earthy pose. Feel how the earth comes up right underneath you. Shin stay steady. Keep widening the left thigh as best you can. And then turn the ribs towards the right leg. All that stability can you just flow with your breath. Good. Exhale, touch the mat. Mm, how do they do this? Oh, step back to three-leg dog for a second. So right leg goes all the way up to three-leg dog. And now right knee in towards your nose. Kick your right foot over to the left side. And you're going to straighten your left leg and come on your right hand like a funky Vashisthasana. Sorry, that was unclear. Yeah, there we go. Good. <laughs> Lots of stability needed. Can you have some flow in your breath? Excellent. And then come all the way back to three-leg dog. So your hand comes down. Sweep the leg back up. Step forward again into lunge. And this time, turn all ten toes towards the long edge of the mat on the left side. Walk your hands into the middle. If you need to, add the blocks. Good. Prasartha Padottanasana. Stay with an extended spine for a moment and bend your knees. With your knees bent, you can accentuate these actions we're talking about. So squeeze the shins in. That's a little tricky for me. That's harder. But really widen the tops of both thighs. Don't even have to think about back so much as just wide. Slightly draw your tail down as you slowly stretch the legs, but keep this emphasis of the shins hugging in and the thighs going wide. You can bring your hands out to your ankles. Or if you need the support, use them underneath of you like chaturanga arms. Mm. Notice how the legs provide this deep nourishment to the rest of the body. They're like your body's roots. And the plant, if it doesn't have healthy roots, you can't do anything for it. Roots first. Shins in. Earthiness. Thighs out like water. And the spine cascades over. Inhale, come back up to fingertips. Turn your right foot towards the front. Walk yourself around and step back to downward facing dog. Second side. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, step forward, lunge. And come up to warrior one. So front toes point straight ahead. Bring your back heel down. And then inhale up. You can bring your hands again to your hips like we did. Take a breath. Ah, scissor and squeeze the legs and then really attention on the right leg. Right leg out to the right. And that's what helps bring the hip around more. Then descend the front thigh if it's available. Reach up. We don't have to go looking for the earth in this pose. We tend to have it already. Not many people just sort of fall apart in this pose. So they're looking for the water. Where's the flow? How can you keep widening at the tops of both thighs? But really, the right thigh needs more, back and wide. And then reach down, down into the stability through the bones. And that can give you lift. And again, just slightly turn your ribs more towards the left leg. So there's this little bit of twist. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step up into three-leg dog. So the left leg goes high. And then it's that funky vashisthasana. Draw your um, left leg under, kick it over to the right, and come up on your left hand, side plank. Lift the left foot off to the right side of the mat. Shoulders back. Just offering some earth into the shoulders. Heart open. Good. Hand down, three-leg dog. <clears throat> Excuse me. And step forward into lunge, bring your heels, sorry, bring your toes around to the long edge of the mat again. Let's 
Okay, you're probably facing the other side. Let's again bend the knees. Imagine you were sweeping the floor with your feet or raking the garden with your feet. Break the feet in towards each other. Notice how that activates your legs. Really activate your shins, so pull your pinky toes back towards your outer heels. <clears throat> Excuse me, keeping that, take the tops of both thighs wider. So we're finding fluidity in the hips by widening the tops of the thighs. Then bow over more, hands to the ankles, and stretch the legs this time by thinking of taking the tops of the thighs back and wide so much that the legs become straight. Hook the tail under. Release your ribs towards the floor, your spine towards the floor. So as you push now down through the legs, like roots rooting into the earth, the spine can grow a bit longer. Such a nourishing pose. And if your head hits the floor, it's fine. You just push the head lightly into the floor. If it doesn't, it's fine. You just don't do that. When we get into the lower body like this, we come away feeling extremely grounded, which in a great time of change can be a huge gift. Inhale and come up to your hands. Extend your spine again. Turn your foot towards the front of the mat and step back to downward facing dog. And again, there's the option, vinyasa or mud salutation or down dog or child's pose. There's something in the middle of all that. Notice that you make the decision based on your intention and based on your, <clears throat> excuse me, based on what feels like thriving right now. So once more with the leg in that sort of sideways position, take your right leg up in three leg dog and now draw your knee towards your nose and really hover it in. Turn your hips towards the left and then kick your left, your, sorry, your right foot out. This time though, come onto the outer edge of your right hip. Microphone in my way. There we go, so it's kind of funky. Then if possible, you can bring your um, right foot up towards your face a little more. So mine always ends up close to my heel. <laughs> you bring it up towards your face a little more. Go onto your right foot, see if you can come back towards lunge foot back there for a sec. Good, and then it, that will relax in a second. So on the outer edge of the right hip, come up on fingertips, lift up, and start to twist towards the front. Really stretch the legs. Keep the hips turned over towards the left side as you draw the ribs now more and more to the right. Even walk your hands a little more over to the right. So now think of this left side rib cage getting super duper long. Legs are steady, press the left thigh bone back, and then either stay right here or walk your chest out, bring your chest onto the mat, and spread your arms out on the floor if you have the space. Um, so it's like you're just kind of dropping into a um, natural, muddy pool to be nourished, being held by the mat. The, the, Challenge here is not to just go completely relaxed, but to keep some stability in the legs and to actively turn your torso. We can tune in to the rhythms of nature and find a great deal of peace there. This practice can help us do that because the rhythms of nature are always present within our own body. And push your hands down, lift your chest back up, walk back around towards the front, and now where your legs are, you just bend your knees. So they're in like a star, I don't know what to call this thing, like a, kind of a star shape. Walk yourself up so you're more <clears throat> now on top. Your left buttock may or may not come all the way down. There we go. Big breath in. Take your uh, left hand to your right knee. 
take your right hand and you walk it slowly around behind you. And just take a baby twist. Do, try pulling the left hip back as the ribs twist to the right. And there we go. And then walk your hands back around to the center. It's a little lean forward to shift back up to downward facing dog as our transition. That's called Brigitte's cross or sometimes called dying warrior. Let's try the second side. So take your left leg high, bend your left knee, bring it in, and then you turn your hips and your, your knee towards the right, stretch your left leg out and bring your left outer hip down onto the floor. And the, you know, it's, it's, try not to be way back. You really are forward on the left outer hip. Bring your hands onto the mat and lift up through your torso. So stretching back with the right leg and trying to lift out of this the same way you might with pigeon in the torso. So that gives a lot of stretch to the midsection of the body. Now keeping the hips turning towards the right side, as you lift the ribs, walk a little over towards the left side. Yes. And you might want to even take your right hand a little further out and forward. For me, that's really nice. So the right hip reaches back, the right ribs reach forward. And then once you feel like you've gotten wherever you're going to get to, chest down, spread the arms on the mat or on the floor if there's room, and your head can turn away from your front leg as long as it's not bothering your neck or shoulder. Oh. Earth is always here holding you. So stay active, but also let the earth hold you. It's such a relief to connect with something that's not changing, not shaking, moving. No, there's no foundational shift usually. Changing all the time though, of course, with the weather, the seasons. We're foundationally here for us. Just like Shakti. Good. Walk your hands back underneath of you. Push back up and then bend both knees. So both knees are bent in a 90 degree angle and you shift back so that your, your right hip may or may not totally reach the floor, but it's moving in that direction. I know I can't see you guys here, but inhale, lift your spine, bring your right hand to your left knee, bring your left hand behind and just a little twist. Now, all my right hip wants to do is push forward. So I'm resisting that, pull the right hip back. So the twist is in the middle of the body, not coming from the, the hip shifting forward. Excellent. Good, untwist, back around. Go back again to downward facing dog. And if you want to do more, one more vinyasa, take one more vinyasa. If you're feeling complete on those, just rest in down dog or child's pose. You may start to notice now a deeper sense of just being settled. That's really the gift. It's like getting settled into the body, into home. Once you've come back to downward facing dog, bend both knees and go into child's pose for a moment. Imagine the body as supple clay, not rigid, cooked, firm, but not so watery it falls apart either. The supple, movable clay form that can take shape, but ultimately shaped by a larger force, life. Shakti. We let the practice shape us as well so that we move with intention 
the integrity on the mat and all. Slowly crawl out onto your belly. If your blanket's still at the back of the mat, you can kick it off. It doesn't, we won't need it. All right. Just quad stretch. Take your left forearm parallel to the top of your mat. Left elbow under left shoulder. Bend your right knee, reach back for your right foot. Really str strongly, so create earth in the right leg before you do this. Lots of engagement. And then bend it in, and you'll find that the it's a little more protected for one thing, but the stretch may be a little more sort of firm too. See if you can wide, even here, hug the shin in and widen the thigh. Shin in, thigh out. Lengthen your ribs away from your hips. Reach your right knee away from your hips. And exhale, release, switch sides. Right shoulder under right, el right elbow under right shoulder. Reach back for your left foot. Spread your toes. Good, good everybody. So again, as you spread your toes, you wanna fan your foot slightly out towards the pinky toe rather than in and then hug the shin in. You might even peek back at your leg because shin will go out without you even knowing. And then widen the thigh. And lengthen your left knee away from your hip. So you drag your heart forward. And just notice if you're getting really like earthbound in your face, like where it may not need to be, and let that go. Exhale and release. All right, press back. We're gonna take some seated postures. So come and grab your blanket for your seated postures. You may want your strap to support you in getting your hand and your foot to meet each other. And the intention here is just like, again, getting so grounded, so like sweetly nourished by what the practice can do that you walk out of here just like ready for anything. <laughs> rooted, fully rooted. All right, so once you come to your seat, kick your legs out wide. So of course, if you wanna be on your wide angle of your mat, you can do that. And strap can be close as needed. Upadishta konasana. Good one for practicing this shins in, thighs out work. So push your heels into the mat, point your kneecaps straight up. Yeah, and if, if you haven't, ugh, turn the thigh. So there's the thighs out action without us even doing it. Um, with, that's the manual version. Now push your heels down into the mat, pull your pinky toes up towards your outer heel. Yeah, notice how that activates your leg in a new way. And then squeeze the shins in. So you can imagine you had a giant block right here that you were squeezing. Now lean a little forward slightly. You let your pelvis tip. And as you do, now spin the thighs towards the mat and wide. The shins are staying in, the thighs go towards the mat and wide. And oh my gosh, suddenly there's more going on in the inner thigh possibly. Hook your tail, lift your belly. Yeah, I know, so many. Now, keep all this, walk over towards the right side. This might be the moment when your strap becomes a fortunate player with you or not. Lift your rib cage, turn your ribs towards your right leg and then walk out. Maybe your left hand reaches your right foot, maybe not. Welcome the breath, like the breeze blowing through. And connect with a deep sense of settling into the earth more than striving for some outer shape. So do the actions first. Shins go in. Widen at the top of the thigh. Really widen your left thigh. That's the one we were 
working on earlier, the back thigh. And wherever you feel like, oh, that's the stopping point, stop and also send breath and water, a sense of flow, whatever is giving you a boundary. Doesn't mean anything will change. Just send the flow to the stop part. Inhale and slowly lift. Come on up. Turn to the middle. See, you're already there. And then anchor again. Yeah. Then turn to the other side. Again, take your strap if you need it. And I like to start upright first because if you just go, usually the right hip will just like uproot and we don't want that. Think of the right sitting bone like a bulb planting, planted into the mat. Then bow forward. Take your time. Maybe your right hand reaches your left shin or foot. Squeeze the shins in, widen the tops of both thighs, particularly now your right inner thigh. Widen it back as you lift the left rib cage and lengthen the whole rib cage. Let the earthy, stable parts of your body be met with fluid breath. Matt, with more interior flow, it's, it's like a quality you can bring to those places, even if nothing physically actually changes. It's like opening. So in this pose, keep thinking of the back leg, the right leg. And it's amazing what that will do for your extension. Inhale, slowly lift yourself back up. Turn to face the middle, and just a moment, squeeze the shins, thighs wide, come forward. And forward again can be relative. You might be just staying up on the, on the pinky, on the fingertips and just slightly bowed, or you may walk yourself all the way out. Shin squeeze in. Hollow the groins as the tops of the thighs go out. The deep alignment of the legs transfers into nice supported opening. Not too much, not too little. Balance. Exhale, just walk your hands back. And bend the knees. See if they'll <laughs> come back in. And you can take the legs out ahead of you. Just do a little movement. It just feels so grounding to me. I love it. Okay, so now with the legs out, again, the strap can stay close. Bend your right knee in and keep the right knee bent. Yep, right foot on the mat. So left leg straight, right foot on the mat. Take your left hand off to the left and just lean your torso off to the left a little bit. We want to get clearance of the right side from the right inner leg. And then exhale and reach forward. So coming on the inside of the leg. There we go. Um, actually, that's fine. So you can either take your hand to your foot or the strap, or you can take your right hand a little bit out to the right and go into a little bit of a forward fold. Left hand, again, can either be, so the hands either come out like a tripod to support you, or hands can go on the foot to support you. It's tricky, shin hugs in, tops of the thighs wide. It's a little harder to find here for me. Maybe it's easy for you, I don't know. So inhale and lift up. Take your right hand to your right foot. Lift up your right foot. Bend your left knee in like you're gonna sit cross-legged. You may need your hands to do that. And just move your foot around a little bit. So getting into the root of the body, legs, hips, and then come into baby cradle. 
Again, your baby cradle can be any variation. It can be quite low. You can be rocking your baby almost on the mat, or you can come up higher. Shins in here means chin towards your chest or towards your torso. Thigh out means thigh away from your body because of the angle of the leg. Yeah. So wherever you are, even if your shin is quite low, think of the shin moving towards the chest. Think of the thigh moving away. Press the thigh actively away. Excellent. Stay steady with your breath. You might rock your baby a little over towards the left side without uprooting your right hip, and that'll take it in your hip in a different way. And then once again, you might want your straps. Your strap will go around your right foot. One last piece of this puzzle. Left hand to the right foot. Open the knee a little bit. Hand underneath, right hand underneath to go to sundial. So your right hand goes under the leg, and then out to the side. Maybe you're using your strap on your foot or you're using your hand and then slowly open uh, right leg out. This just can be a lot on the side body, so if the side body's not quite there yet, just use your strap. Yep, you got it. <laughs> That's it. Yes, yeah. So if you can, see if you can lift the strap over your head. Yes, your elbow goes up. That's it, and you turn, you lean. Ah, oh, it feels good in my leg, good, and then slowly come back in. The leg felt ready, the side body was, okay. Take both legs out. Let's do the other side. Bend your left knee, left foot comes to the mat. See if you can get both sitting bones down. Sometimes that's impossible and the left sitting bone stays up, but down like a bulb into the earth. And then right hand a little off to the right, lift your left arm up, you can lean a little over, so you clear this space, and then reach out, out towards the foot. Tendency is for the left, sorry, the right knee to just be like, I'm gonna go off to the right, hug it in, yeah, and either hold your foot, hold the leg, use a strap, and bow over. It can be a big bow, it can be a small bow. This is one where it's a little tricky. Like it seems like it should be so easy and actually it's, it can be quite a challenge. Hug both shins in, take the tops of both thighs wide and we create this like supportive muddy mixture in the low body to nourish you. All this opening nourishes you so deeply. It helps you ground, turns on the digestive channels and the body opens those up so things are moving freely. Aligns the leg muscles so you're not so tight. Good, inhale, come up. You can bend the left knee in to like a seated cross-legged position. Take your right leg up, sorry, switch. Right leg in, left leg up, I'm mirroring you. So it's a little wonky and then bend and straighten a couple of times. And then opening the knee out, come into baby cradle again. Wherever your baby is cradled is perfect for your baby, right? Like the baby, not all babies like the same things. Not all babies need the same things to, to thrive. So you work with the baby as it is. Click your pinky toe, your left pinky toe out to the left. So it's not up towards your face, it's out. And then again, the shin is moving towards the chest, whatever that may mean for you right now. And the thigh moves away. That's thigh wide. Good, see if you can move your low back in a little bit more. Yeah, good, shoulders back, there's hard. And you take this to the sundial. So uh, right hand goes to the bottom of the foot or the strap goes along the bottom of the foot, around the foot. Left hand then goes under. So I lift my hip to get under here and I use my hand underneath to really get the leg up but it can be wherever it is. Now, left hand down, lean left, and then slowly open the leg. So you can really lean over to the left, and you don't have to try to stay upright. Think of leaning left, good. And then turn towards the right, looking back towards where the right shoulder was. Sundial, and it can be low, it's fine. Excellent, and 
and slowly bend the leg, bring it back in. <sighs> okay, I know, I know, it's a lot. Take your legs out. One more little challenging pose before we come towards Shavasana. So, um, you get to decide whether your knee wants to try this today or not. Um, two options. Option one, Janu Shirshasana. Just regular Janu Shirshasana with the right. Oh, sorry, we should do the other side first. With the left leg bent and out to the left. Option two is to take the Janu Shirshasana and take it in like a half lotus. So the leg bends. Leg comes forward, heel slides up onto the thigh, and now my toes go off and my knee is out here. Um, more open you are, your knee may come closer to the floor. So either regular Janu Shirshasana or left leg up on the thigh. Mm. This one is my tricky leg, so I'm just going to see how it goes. All right, either way. And the ankle bone is just pressing into the thigh, so that's just you know, an extra added bonus. <laughs> so take a deep breath. We're going to take the left hand towards the right foot or, no, sorry. We're going to take the right hand up. Sorry, my brain is breaking. Right hand down, left arm out like this. Yeah. Take a big breath, lengthen, and then twist to look back. You slide your left hand along your back and possibly meet your foot or just hold the back part of your body. Then your right hand reaches for your right foot. Does that make sense? So here it is from the side. So it's the twisted hip opener more than the forward bend. There might be a forward bend quality to it too. Yeah. Yeah, if it's available to you to forward bend quite a bit, you can. And then if it's available to you, you can actually turn back towards your front leg and do like more like nose to knee like John or Shoshasana. Feel good. Take a couple of breaths. Inhale. Lengthen and slowly rise back up. Does that make sense? It looked like it, but I know it's a lot of pieces and parts, and we don't often do that pose. Okay, so take your left leg out, as in I don't know if I've ever taught this. Bend your right leg in, and you're either going to take it into regular Janu Shirshasana, great way to work, and you can still do the twisted action with it, or slide the leg up to this half lotus position. So half lotus, you do want to watch your knee that it's not any higher than your hip because you can really kind of torque things. So either sit up taller or come into Johnny. Um, and ideally, this pinky toe edge is right up in the crease of your thigh. So as that happens, your knee may come more forward. That's totally fine. All right, so sitting up well, take your right arm out. And then you twist. So allow the right arm to twist, 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 and then slide the right hand along the back of your waistline. Maybe just hold your left hip, maybe connect with your foot. Then left arm comes out to the left foot or toe. And again, you can stay in this more twisted open position. Try, try to keep your right hip forward or turn your body back towards your leg and bow over. When you bow, if you get a deep enough bow, your foot will press into your abdominals. And that's by design. That's okay. It helps to, again, stimulate support digestion. It's not necessarily the most comfortable to stay there forever, but definitely supports digestion. Leg strong. Slowly come out of the pose, stretch right leg back out alongside your left. Feel both legs firmly connected to the mat. Sit up tall. You open up to the essence that's already within you. Right? 
And then exhale and bow. Take your hands to your outer shins. We did that on the, um, in the lunge at the very beginning. Press your shins in. Press the tops of your thighs wide and down. Bow into Paschimottanasana, our last pose in the seated position today. Shins hug in. You can use the hands to create that earthy support that you have all the earth, all the stability that you need within you. You can just access it. And then the fluidity, the flow with flowingness, roll the inner thighs wide, like down towards the mat, wide to the sides, push them out from the hip sockets. And notice how that creates length for your spine as you bow over. You may wish to change your hands to the bottoms of your feet for the last moment or stay where you were. Inhale, slowly come back up. Come off of your blanket, come down onto your back. And when you come to your back, again, imagine you're just resting down into like the fertile soil of a garden, just ready to hold your body. So imagine particularly the hips and the shoulders and the base of the skull resting down into that rich soil and then let your hand, your arms and your legs hover up. So I'm allowing the shoulders to settle into the soil, the, the tops of the thighs to settle into the soil, but then as if the soil's on the bottom of the lake, gently move around a little bit. Let the limbs go wherever they'd like to go. Last week we called this being like seaweed. So you can roll, move, shift, however feels good. You might wanna bring a hand to a leg. <sighs> Super watery, lots of fluidity in the motion. And you have the feedback of the mat beneath you, but just truly allow the body to move however feels good. And then softly make this into a different kind of motion. Draw your right knee in towards your chest and stretch your left leg out along the mat. Chin stays hugged in, top of the right thigh wide. And switch sides. Take your right leg out, draw your left leg in. You may find that you want to hold on top of the shin or behind the shin, the thigh. Either one is fine. Shin is hugged in, thigh wide. Let your breath be even easier. And now softly draw both legs in, curl into a ball, hold your knees or come into happy baby pose. See what your body, when you listen in deeply, what does it say that it wants? So maybe it's something a little bit different than what I offered, that's fine. Gently bring this to a close. And as you're ready, stretch your body out for Shavasana. Notice what will help you even thrive for Shavasana. So you may want to add more clothing, blanket, prop. If you're using a blanket, you can even think of like a mud wrap. But you're all wrapped up.
allow the body to start to settle into stillness now. Soften the feet. Feel the throb of aliveness in your legs in particular. And let yourself soften into that rather than resisting. Become aware of the flow of the breath. stuck or held. Just aware, not doing anything with it. Let yourself rest in being there. truth that is always in your heart. All is well. There is peace. There is unconditional love always available. Feel the nourishment of your practice drawing you into the center of your heart. Rest there.
taking time with your breath. Take intentional breath and intentionally release whatever needs letting go of with your exhale. Toes, knees, arms and legs. Stretch, move however feels good. So out of the stability and stillness of Shavasana, we awaken to movement, aliveness. Bend your knees and roll to your right side and then slowly come up to seated allow your eyes to close and again settle the sitting bones as if they're sitting in rich mud turn your palms may this practice nourish and support you finding ways to thrive within your body and within your life. May you discover and amplify those things that bring you balance and make you feel the most you so that you can be a vessel of Shakti on this planet. offer our own consciousness to those around us, to each other, back into the one consciousness with a chant of Om. Welcome your in-breath. Namaste. Alrighty, friends. Thank you so much for practicing this morning. So good to be with you.